Thank you for joining me in this screencast. I'm Rex Proctor. In this screencast, we're going to cover off angle numbers, joining timelines, and optimizing space for those timelines. Now, I'm going to go into my extra storage here, and I double click on my four quarters, which is the folder that has all my sample footage in it. Now, let's have a look at one of these uh, timelines that I have here that I'm going to do the join to because I have four quarters and I want to put those all together in a single timeline. Now the first thing that I want to show you is right here is the angle number, right? So if I right click on this, I can see that we have the angle number set to one. So every time I press the one, that will flick to that angle. And it's the same here. I go two, three, four. Now, the angle number is important when you're joining because you want to have the same keyboard shortcut that will flick to that. Now, if you join timelines together and number two is, say, in this case, the broadcast, then when I hit number two, that's going to come up with the wrong angle. So as you import the different angles into the movie collection, you will be assigned a number in the order that you drop them in. But I'm going to show you how to set that up so that uh, you can manually assign those. So every time you create a movie collection, consider setting those angle numbers so that other users that are using the content that you've put together have that expectation of when they hit number one, it's going to show a certain angle or flick to that certain angle. All right, so let's create a new super tab here. And I'm going to bring in the fourth quarter of this and just walk through that whole routine. So here I've got uh, on my extra space here, and I'm going to jump in, and I'm just going to grab all four angles at once for my fourth quarter, drag those babies in, and those will come up like that. Now here, I actually want this one to be number two, so I'm going to set that to two, and if we zoom this in, we can kind of see which one is which. So this is the right angle, and I'm going to move that to the bottom right. That's going to be angle number four and that will automatically switch to angle three. So let's just do a quick arrangement here. Bring that up there and bring the right one down here. And I hit double zero and that will then do the average, which tries to figure out what you might want in terms of the arrangement. And then I just simply link the timeline. Now you'll notice we have a new feature here that when you link, it will take on the name of the collection. That's just kind of handy uh, little feature there. If you hold Option and do that, that will force the rename uh, if it already has had a name. So here, so I've now changed the name there because obviously I don't want that called Broadcast. Now if I hold Option, click and drag, it will rename that to the newly named collection. So just a way of saving you a bit of um, time when it comes to naming stuff. All right, so I'm going to flick to two here and find out when our bounce is because we have to do our alignment, right? So I'm looking, let's zoom that in. This is a convenient feature to use here. Okay, so there I'm happy with that. Let's flick back out of that. And ooh, this is going to be a tricky one because look at what's going on with the broadcast. So let's bring the broadcast forward because I can see, you can do this synchronization uh, anywhere in the movie, actually, wherever you can find out where there are four angles. Okay, so there's the umpire going down. I want it to be right there. And then I'm going to go to my adjust start time offsets, and we're going to bring this one forward a bit, which is actually bringing the whole thing backward in a weird way. Now remember, we're just adjusting the start time offsets. So I'm zooming in here. And we're going to go forward a little bit. Oh. Boom, right there. Zooming that in. Remember, holding shift allows you to pan. Let's move that forward. And there we go. So now he's bashing it on the ground. OK, cool. Now we're all synchronized. And the next little trick I'm going to do is I'm going to import the XML for this. So I drag and drop my XML in. And then I'm going to zoom that, holding Command, zoom my timeline in, go back to my bounce there, because this is I need to slip these clips. So there we go. I'm happy with that. Zoom that back out. Hit Command A, right click, and slip selected clips. 
and then I can drag that down. So let's get that to our center bounce, which is gonna be right about there. I'm pretty happy with that, right in the middle. And I close that off, and now we've got our angles and our uh, data, our timeline data, all synchronized. Okay, sweet. Now let's close off all of our super tabs. We don't really need those now. Now just remember here, as we're, we're gonna do the join next, and you'll see this red disclosure triangle here is red because it is where we're going to be saving new content. So when we do the join, the join is going to be saved to the same folder. If you wanted, you can um, either right click on the folder where you want the content to be saved to, or a handy little keyboard shortcut option, double click on the folder name will then set the focus folder. I wanna save it here. Now I select the timelines that I want to join in the order holding down command. And then I right click and I choose join four timelines. In this case, because I have four selected. That number may be different depending on how many timelines you have selected. I fire that off and that will generate a new movie collection and then it puts those all together. Now you need to note that this is an operation that copies all of the data. So you want to make sure, if you want it to be quick, you want to be on the same disk where the original content is. If you're saving it across to a secondary disk or a server, that will take a little bit more time, but you can see how quickly that brought that together. Okay, now I do, in order to show the next feature, I need to create a clip here because the optimized space feature will, um, will require that we um, set this up so that we have full clip coverage. So optimize space basically compacts the footage. So I'm gonna hold and create a clip all the way across to that quarter right to the end. Now optimize space is a compaction process. So you can see the areas here in my quarter that I don't want that footage. So what Optimize Space will do is basically cut that out and it's just going to compact everything. Um, again, Optimize Space is a feature that you will have to have extra space in order to do. It is an in-place operation, but it actually cuts all the movies and generates a new movie. It's not just simple copy. Right, so I'm there, and now I just go to my export options here, and I choose Optimize Space. Bam. Optimize, and you can see what's happened in the timeline here is it's cut out those bits and shrunk them together, compacting them, and you'll see that I've got the progress here. So this can take quite a bit of time. Here I've got 24 gigabytes uh, with the four angles you know, for each quarter, which is 16 total files. Now when I compact this, I'm actually going to end up saving a whole gigabyte, but I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. Um, something while we're here I want you to note is since we did the start time offsets, you can see we have these padding movies, which is very handy because it sets it up so that you know that there is some video footage that may be missing. And this is especially handy if you have a, an angle that has the full performance in it, and then maybe uh, another angle that comes in a few minutes after the performance started. So this padding allows you to still use that footage and have it come in at a later time, or even um, it may end earlier or something. It really helps with the video editing aspects of this. So um, that is how you do the optimized space the joining of timelines, and then the angle numbers. Mm -hmm.